All right, it's time for another math easy solution to discuss. Well, I'm going to do some examples actually on the fundamental theorem of calculus, or basically just integration now with the new methods that I showed in my earlier video. Now, the first example is this one here, basically integration or the integral from 1 to 3 of e to the x dx here. Now, remember from part 2 of the fundamental theorem, this equals to basically f of, uh, yeah, basically f of 3 minus f of 1. Where this, where this a capital F is just the antiderivative of e to the x, or uh, the f prime of x is equal to, in this case, uh, this is e to the x here. E, yeah, e to the x here, and this f is is any antiderivative, and in this case here, the antiderivative of e to the x is just equal to, well, e to the x here. It's uh, by itself plus a constant here, but uh, in this case, uh, in the in the theorem, you could just pick any antiderivative because the derivative of this always cancels. And when you subtract, the constant cancels. So we'll just pick with e to the x in this case. So what we do now, this integral is going to equal to, yeah, this uh, from 1 to 3, e to the x is just going to equal to, well, e to the 3 minus e to the 1. And that's, well, this is just the answer then. e to the 3 minus e. And you could plug this in a calculator, or if you're doing an exam, you could just leave it like this uh, if you don't have a calculator. But yeah, so we'll just stick with this one. This one's uh, the answer to it then. Now, also, uh, before I do another example, I just want to get, uh, just write down something about notation here. What we could write this subtraction here, we could write it as f of x, and then just put, like, a little sign up here. We'll call this 1 to 3, and this, this would equal to, actually, just general a to b. This would just equal to f of b minus f of a here. So this is just a, an easy way of writing it. I'll show that in the next examples. Yeah, so now, uh, if we look at the second example here, basically it states find the area under the curve of y equals x squared from 0 to 1 here. And, and recall that the area, this one, it's, it's positive always. So it's going to look something like this. So the area is just going to be from 1 to 0. It's just the integral underneath. So this area is just equal to from 0 to 1 of x squared dx here. And now this one here, this equals to the antiderivative of this one if you... Think about this, the antiderivative is just going to be x cubed divided by 3 in this case because when you take the derivative, we'll just call this f of x, because when you take the derivative, this 3 is going to go down using power rule, and then this 3 is canceling, you're left with x squared here. So then we could write this as, using that notation of which I just wrote above, x3 over 3 from 0 to 1. So you just write something like this one here, then, then this would just equal 2, so area is equal to, we'll plug that in, 1. 1 cubed is 1, well, 1 over 3 minus, well, 0 over 3 is equal to just 1 over 3. So that's the area there. Okay, so now if we look at uh, example 3, this one stays just from 3 to x integral of, of dx divided by x here. And this one, this is just, uh, you could just, this is just a simpler way of writing 1 over x dx here. So now if we look at the antiderivative of this, because remember, it's just going to equal to antiderivative at, at 6 minus antiderivative at 3. So in this one here, if we look at it, we know the antiderivative of this is equal to ln and then absolute value of x in my earlier video here. But since this is 3 and 6 are greater than 0, this would just uh, have it equal to ln x for this case. So we don't need to care about this uh, absolute value. It's going to be the same thing. So this is the the uh, antiderivative. So we could just plug this one in. So this will just be ln x from z 3 to 6. And this would equal to, we'll just write it equals to now, yeah, ln 6 minus ln 3, and then using the uh, log logarithmic rules I showed in my earlier video, you can see the video link below also for ln x, the uh, antiderivative of it, or the derivative of this. So then the, this one would just equal to ln 6 divided by 3, this equals to ln 2 here, so we could just stick with this. And now the, the last example I'm going to do today is this one here, example 4, basically find the area under the cosine curve from 0 to b where b is uh, it's between 0 and pi over 2 here. So if we look at this, uh, the graph of this, okay, so now if we look at the cosine curve, it looks something like this. It starts off from at 1, at the value of 1. It goes down here, something like this. See a video link on more on cosine and trigonometry in my video links below. But uh, basically, this is value is 1 here, and this is at pi over 2. It equals to 0 here. And now we want to know this, this area, basically. If we look at just b is in between here somewhere. So this area, if we look at it here, and just apply the integration methods that uh, we that I uh, showed earlier that we've learned. So basically from 0 to b here of cosine x dx, this is equals to, well, the antiderivative of cosine of x is just yeah, sine of x. So this is equals to, because the derivative of sine of x is cos of x. So then this one just equals to now from 0 to b here, and this equals to sine b 
minus sine zero, which is zero. So sine of zero, this one is zero, and we're just left with sine b here. So then basically the area under it is just equal to sine of whatever the function, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, sine of uh, of b here. So if it's cosine, yeah, the area under is just the exact antiderivative of this one here. So and if it, if b is equal to pi over two here, then basically in this case we're going to have the area is equal to sine of pi over two. So this entire area and this equals to if you recall what uh, sine of pi over two is, this one is just equal to one here. Because I recall sine pi over two in radians is just ninety degrees here, so the opposite over adjacent. I mean over hypotenuse. If this is ninety degrees, it's going to be one over one here. So this is this is the answer here, and this. I'm gonna. Uh, I'll show you some notes on this. Yeah, and to basically look at some notes on this example here, because this one uh, looks pretty easy, and it is uh, using this integration methods. We just found this area, this cross hole thing is equal to just just one here, but this wasn't this easy all, always here. So basically, uh, this one, the French mathematician Gilles de Rever Rever Wall. I'm not sure, but yeah, this is this is this is uh, from my calculus book. It has a good little history lesson here. Basically, we first found the area under the sine and cosine curves in 1635. And this was very challenging back then uh, and required a lot of uh, ingenuity. Basically, if we didn't have the benefit of the fundamental theorem as, as above shown, we would have had to compute it like a limit of sums. And, then, and what he did was using obscure tr trigonomic identities, or we could have used a computer algebra system to solve the limit, etc. But it was more difficult for rubber vol because uh, basically the apparatus of limits or the idea of limits wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't uh, invented in 1635, so you can even have used limits there. He would have just been summing up stuff without limits defined in a more systematic way. But then in the 1660s and 1670s, when the fundamental theorem was discovered by Isaac Barrow and exploited by Newton Leibniz, I sh showed more on this on the introduction to fundamental theorem. Basically, such problems became very easy, as you can see from the example above. Well, yeah, that's that's all for it. You can see this one is pretty easy using this theorem here. It's it's a breakthrough actually in basically all of human inventions, etc. Because it applies to so much stuff in all of math and physics and whatnot. Well, that's all for it. If you learn from these examples, uh, I'll do another one where basically the fundamental theorem doesn't apply, and I'll explain that in the next video. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching. You can always download these notes and Dropbox link below. That's all for today. Hopefully, you learn and stay tuned for another math easy solution.